You might have heard of the term quaternary period before. Essentially the period representing what we sometimes refer to as the Ice Age. The period that started about 2.6 million years ago and the period characterized by occasional glaciation on the planet where the ice caps extend and the sea levels drop dramatically. With all of this following a type of a cycle that's most likely a result of orbital changes. Today we refer to this as Milankovitch cycles. Now the Ice Age by itself is a pretty intriguing period and you can learn more about this in one of the previous videos in the description, but somewhere inside this graph there's actually another intriguing mystery. Something that we refer to as the 100,000 year problem. A lot of the geological evidence, mostly coming from a lot of different ice deposits, suggests that something happened approximately a million years ago where the glacial cycles or the ice age cycles changed quite dramatically. At first they were mostly 41,000 years in periodicity and produced relatively thin ice sheets with generally mild effects, but roughly around 1.1 million years ago the cycle suddenly lengthened to about 100,000 years and also dramatically increased in amplitude and in the amount of cooling on the planet. With all this happening kind of suddenly and for the reasons currently unknown to us. And so this unexpected change from the shorter, somewhat milder cycles to much longer and more extreme cycles that lasted for 100,000 years today represents one of the bigger mysteries when it comes to the Ice Age. But there's a reason I wanted to start with this. It's this new paper that recently came out based on genetic analysis of various people living around the planet. Did our ancestors nearly die out? Because it turns out that during this period or during this unusual switch, the genetic analysis suggests that humans almost went extinct. Or I guess more technically, our hominid ancestors that would eventually result in humans, Neanderthals, Denisovans and so on, very likely had a huge struggle surviving roughly around 900,000 years ago and extremely likely because of this unusual change in the planetary conditions. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss what the scientists recently discovered, how it was discovered and what this potentially means for our understanding of the history of human race but also what might happen in the future. And I guess the first important question here is how exactly was any of this discovered? And there are actually two pieces of evidence. One of them is technically the lack of evidence. For example, we generally find quite a lot of stone tools from a lot of ancient hominids during most periods on the planet except for a period about 1 million to maybe 800,000 years ago when a lot of these tools seem to be missing. There is also a major lack of different fossils including hominid remnants as if they kind of suddenly disappeared. But some of the most important discoveries came from recent genetic studies. In this case, by analyzing over 3,000 people from across the planet, specifically from 10 African and 40 non-African populations, the biologists behind this study were able to develop a new method known as FITCOL, fast infinitesimal time coalescent process, whose main purpose was to basically try to sequence DNA in terms of changes over time. With the genetic results showing us that there was definitely some kind of a population bottleneck approximately 930,000 years ago that most likely lasted for 100,000 years, specifically showing us a dramatic decrease in genetic diversity up to about 66%. In biology, these are normally referred to as population bottlenecks. A sudden reduction in the number of group members, very often a result of a sudden change of climate or a sudden decrease in resources. Now this is something that's very commonly studied in a lot of different animals, especially extinct species, but intriguingly in this case it seemed to apply to hominids or ancient humans. Although this is definitely not the first such bottleneck discovered by geneticists studying human DNA. For example, previous studies have already discovered that something happened about 7000 years ago, described in the paper you see right here, where there was an unusual human population bottleneck that lasted for about 2000 years. And this is something that most likely happened in Africa, Europe and Asia where there was an unusual collapse of the Y chromosome. It basically meant that for every single man there was approximately 17 women, implying that anyone with the Y chromosome was extremely unlikely to pass on their genes. Although here it's actually believed to be a result of cultural changes, not so much anything to do with resources or anything to do with climate. The overall social structure during this time 
most likely allowed only certain men to have children, and usually men of higher status and higher wealth, with the overall number of men having children decreasing over time. And so even though the number of males was most likely relatively similar to the number of females, only a small number of those males would pass on their genes. Something that's still visible in the genes today, because it did have a dramatic effect on the Y chromosome. A somewhat similar bottleneck exists in a lot of native populations of North and South America, where genetics show us that all of the descendants here most likely came from just 70 different individuals. Individuals that were able to cross into North America tens of thousands of years ago. But what happened approximately a million years ago actually seems to be way more extreme. This genetic analysis suggests that the total population of hominids on the planet was reduced from about 100,000 to just 1,200 individuals. An enormous drop in genetic diversity of approximately 99%, and all of this lasted for at least 117,000 years, suggesting that there was a huge chance we could have gone extinct. And once again suggesting that this was probably because of that unusual 100,000 year problem. A dramatic shift of climate on the planet most likely left humans completely unprepared and potentially completely drained resources that a lot of early hominids were directly dependent on. Although that's of course just one of potential explanations based on the genetic analysis. The genes seem to suggest that we almost went extinct, but why? That's not something we can answer just yet. In this case, the climate explanation is just a correlation, not causation. But this mid place to scene transition is one of the most likely explanations, at least for now. But strangely enough, something else really exciting happened during this time, specifically in regards to human evolution. The first thing that definitely happened and that's seen in the genes is the dramatic shift in our chromosomes. Prior to this event, we actually used to have 24 chromosomes. All hominids alive today except for humans have 24 pairs. But during this time, human chromosomes merged. And instead we actually got a really large chromosome 2, the second largest chromosome in human body that has approximately 240 million base pairs, representing about 8% of the total DNA. Now this is something we believe Denisovans and Neanderthals had as well, but something that other great apes do not have. Gorillas have 24, and their chromosome 2 is relatively small. And so today we believe that this was actually a result of a merger of two smaller chromosomes that suddenly created a new evolutionary path for human ancestors, but not for chimpanzees and not for other apes. Chimps actually have two smaller chromosomes that have very similar genes in them that we now think was then joined to create our chromosome 2, which makes this one of the biggest differences between our species. And so it's quite likely that this unusual bottleneck that lasted for about 100,000 years resulted in this major evolution, but also possibly created conditions for something else major in human bodies. The complexity of our brain started to dramatically expand and develop over time as well, very likely because during this unusual bottleneck time, it was really the brains that most likely allowed certain hominids to survive by allowing them to come up with creative solutions despite smaller numbers. Now obviously there's not a lot of evidence for any of this, but this is at the moment one of the best explanations we have. There is definitely evidence for a dramatic climate change. For example, there is evidence that about 1 million years ago, Mediterranean climate was extremely hostile to ancient humans. It was just way too cold here, with various fossils from regions like Portugal suggesting that the oceans were at least minus 6 degrees Celsius, with the land mostly being frozen solid or a desert. But somehow we survived, evolved, and basically became one of the most dominant species on the entire planet which by itself is absolutely extraordinary and definitely deserves more studies and more genetic investigations in order to figure out how exactly all this progressed and what might have happened back in the days. But even though we got lucky in that time, it's obviously hard to tell how long our luck will last and if we're going to be staying the dominant species for a long time or if someone one day takes over. So this is of course a question we are not going to be able to answer for a very long time, but intriguingly there are quite a few studies that try to address this as well. For example, who is going to take over once the humans are gone completely? Is there an animal that's going to take over and adapt to live in these abandoned cities, potentially becoming a new dominant species? 
Now we know that based on regions like Chernobyl for example, a lot of mammals do tend to adapt and even use our abandoned settlements for their own purposes, but none of them can be called a dominant species just yet. They're just surviving, scavenging for food and using the places we evacuated for their own needs. But it is possible that animals like baboons for example, that already co-inhabit a lot of regions with humans, may actually possess enough intelligence to possibly even use some of the simpler tools for their own needs. So in some sense, maybe some of the apes could take over after us. But at this point it's obviously just guesswork. If you have any other ideas or other explanations, feel free to leave a comment below. But anyway, on that note, definitely exciting research and exciting discoveries in regards to that one period when we basically almost went extinct. Definitely something we should study a little bit more and definitely something that we shouldn't just ignore. But for now, that's kind of all we know. Once there are more discoveries or more studies, I'll follow this up with another video. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.